Well, this drama then unfolded with this very clear picture of an alpha particle, but only one in 20,000 being backscattered. So the trajectory carried the alpha particle, one in 20,000, in some direction other than the initial direction, but very consistently. It was a very consistent ratio of the backscattered alpha particles to the incident beam. And this immediately recognized that a completely new model of atomic structure was required. And it was Rutherford who supplied this model. And the model was irrefutable. It said that the plum pudding model was completely incorrect in its design and architecture. That the nuclear model was in fact the representation, the fact that nearly all the mass of the atomic structure occurred as a tiny particle in the center of that atomic distribution. And the electrons then formed a cloud around that central particle. But most of the volume was empty space. And a number of years later, in fact, this is one of the most famous quotes in science, came from Ernest Rutherford, in fact, almost 25 years after he had made this discovery. And the quote was, it was quite the most incredible event that has ever happened to me in my life. It was almost as incredible as if you fired a 15-inch shell at a piece of tissue paper and it came back and hit you. That's how stunning these experimental results were. But also to the credit of Rutherford, he listened to the experiment that he designed and he realized that he had designed the experiment exactly the right way to detect the presence of the nucleus of the atom. So, Rutherford proposed this nuclear theory of atomic structure. And the nucleus consists of positive charge, and it consists of virtually all the mass of the atom. The second aspect was that virtually the entire volume of the atom is empty, and it consists of a small number of electrons. And he didn't know exactly how those electrons were dispersed within that empty volume. That's going to be the subject of quantum mechanics that we'll get to. But he realized that those electrons resided in the vast emptiness of the atom that was punctuated by this extremely massive positive core called the nucleus and that the number of positively charged particles in the nucleus equaled the number of electrons. And he named these positively charged particles protons. So the orders of magnitude and scale here are extremely important. When we look at the atom, which encompasses the electrons that reside around that central nucleus, the dimension of the atom is approximately 10 to the minus 10 meters. But when we look at the nucleus, its diameter is five orders of magnitude, 100,000 times less, or 10 to the minus 15 meters. And at that juncture, all that was known was that the protons, the positive charge, existed in the nucleus. And so there was one more very important element in the discovery of the structure of the atom. That missing element was finally resolved the discovery of what was the other component of the nucleus. And what was immediately obvious was that the mass of the nucleus was not simply composed of protons. And the reason this became very clear very quickly was that helium had two electrons with a negative charge, but it had four times the mass of hydrogen. So it had two electrons, it was neutral, so that meant it had two protons. But that constituted only half of the required mass. And so Rutherford, working with a student by the name of James Chadwick, demonstrated that the unaccounted for mass was comprised of a neutral particle termed the neutron. And that neutron then explained both the charge balance, the same number of electrons and protons, but it explained the differing masses of the nuclei that constituted the elements in the periodic table. So now the structure of the nucleus involved the positive proton, 
but the neutron of nearly the same mass with no charge whatsoever. And what's remarkable is that it wasn't until 1932 that the, that the component of the nucleus, the other one, namely the neutron, was discovered and quantitatively defined. This was not a simple set of experiments, even with the growing sophistication true in the early decades of the 20th century.